All right. Let's start with a simple question. Who has, uh, who knows about the IRL API? Okay, I expected more, damn you audience. But still like one third of the people from these one third uh, uh, who has ever used the IRL API? One, I have a disappointing, but still uh, that's my measurement for, for, for the quality of the audience in, in each case. But don't worry, don't worry. Um, I can I can just explain you what it is. It's um, uh, the the uh, API itself is something that we invented in invented well that we created in 2010, and um, API.irl.be is able to uh, scrape the website of the of the Belgian railway company and gives you direct access to the uh, time schedules of the trains. So it's great if you want if you wonder on which platform or on uh, or uh, how much delay your your train has you simply do a, a, a fetch uh, thing in your browser and you're able to uh, to get it you can even show it on on anything that supports javascript hooray this is this is awesome and people agree with me that this is awesome because um, uh, because we have uh, we have many uh, applications from digital signage to smartwatch applications to to bots to uh, games like you have to to try to collect as many delays as possible uh, by by taking trains and checking in on trains uh, to to live board applications to the railer app and so on. So uh, on Android, there's a B trains app that a app that's that's most used using the iRail API. You also have uh, uh, the the railer app on on, on iPhone. But um, uh, yeah, we still scrape the, the, the website of the of the uh, Belgian railway company, and yeah, that that's a problem, of course, because we are just a non-profit organization. We want to stimulate digital creativity concerning mobility. But yeah, why us? Why should we do it? And that's why we we we've been we've been uh, asking and asking to the the Belgian railway company, can you please just publish your data yourself? And in 2015, finally, they didn't say yes, but we convinced the the, the, the minister to 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 write it into law that the the SNCB has to open up their uh, their data. So that's that's the the advocacy part of of, of my talk. We succeeded in, in 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 making sure they have to. Do they already publish their data now? It's 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 now 2019 since 2015. Well, you 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 may have guessed that they have some delay and um, always works delays jokes. Um, but you may have guessed uh, uh, right now they have like a public data sharing contract for their static data. You also have like a semi real time feed. I say semi because they only give the delays. They don't give the platform changes and so on. Still a lot of problems. Thus, we still scrape the website and you still have access to the best data. Shh. You still have access to the best uh, uh, data um, uh, through our API, api.irl.be. And now that uh, SNCB has to publish their data, they also ask us like, ah, how? How do we have to publish our uh, open data? And we wondered like, do they just have to implement the same API that we do today? And we came to an awkward uh, uh, conclusion because, uh, uh, because we said no. And, and, and the reason is that if you start modeling something like this, like, uh, okay, now we have API dot, of course, HTTPS, uh, uh, api.irl.be and then we have the from to and the connections and the, the, the live boards and the stations and so on. You can all uh, get it from there. If you're interested, docs.irl.be, you find all the documentation. Um, uh, but, but this is nice. Uh, it's, it starts simple from to. But of course, you, you also need to set the departure time. So from the moment that you set the departure time, you may also wonder, hmm, um, don't I also need for the people of, of my specific uh, user group, I need wheelchair accessibility. So you need to pick up your phone. You need to call to to you need to make a call to uh, the SNCB, for example, and you need to ask them, please open up your wheelchair accessible uh, accessibility data by also adding a feature in in the route planning API to, to to have this. And while you're at it, I also need different transit modes. So add planes in there because I want to to have intermodal transit uh, route planning 
uh, with with the flights in there. So so I so I know how to how to how, when I arrive at Brussels Airport, which train to take. And I also maybe want to compare whether 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 the train or the car is the best option and so on. I, I even want to to have to have the shortest path or maybe the hap the path that makes me the happiest. So, a long story short this entire story will make that this api will become highly 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 individualized for certain use cases and that that's 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 a, that's a problem because we cannot make sure that sncb will 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 implement all the different uh, uh, use cases that we have in mind we want we want to think for ourselves we want to be innovative ourselves we want to make sure that we can drive the services behind these this data this for me is not open data anymore it's a service on top of uh, your data so how do they have to 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 publish uh, uh, uh this data ah yeah i i still have the, the slide about why i think this is a bad idea this just sums it up um so you cannot implement your own features but you cannot add your own data sets either like about flights uh, it's very costly also for the sncb if if, if google maps decides to to to, to use this this data set their service might get uh, overloaded quickly. And also a fourth one is, is, is maybe uh, uh, also interesting is that one server will then have to, to, to know everything about uh, all the people because the entire request gets always sent to, to, to that server. So, so they, the request itself contains user sensitive uh, uh, data. So we, we decided to, to rethink the, 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 uh, uh, how route planning data should be shared. We decided that uh, that the raw data blocks, and, and we, we we put a block here. Right? That's that's uh, that's a departure of a train. I think that the the main data for that 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 uh, SNCB is working with is departures, train departures. So if we just take take uh, uh, take all the departures, put them in one big list, and order them in time. So, for instance, one departure can be in Gans and Peters, one uh, departure can be in in Hasselt, and so on. But we just order them all in time. If we then want to 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 uh, uh, to calculate the route on top of that, we just need to scan a certain time frame because we can maybe say I want to travel between eight and ten. That means that I will have to go from here to somewhere over there. I can just take take one at a time and say like, hmm, can I take this one already or not? And and and, and so on. It's the sh it's a simple shortest path algorithm. It goes fast. It's O N for the for the engineers among us. It's uh, it's O N Y. You just have to scan the amount of uh, connections you have in a certain uh, uh, time window. Now um, on the web, we can also we can also do this because that's how how root planning algorithms work in the uh, on on big machines that just load all the data in memory. But if we load all the data and memory on one machine, then we are again thinking in the way that that uh, that the, the 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 SNCB would set up the, this this API. So so let's rethink this, and this is basically what we've done. We've just selected this big array, and we've made pages from them. So each page just has a next page link, and you can follow them. That's the that's the concept. So if you start routing here and you're at the end, you can decide, hmm, I need the next page. You go to the next page. You find the next page. You continue until you find you find your uh, destination now what what does it mean this this means that um uh that a client will have to download the data itself will download way too much data and will to do we will have to do a couple of requests like for instance, for a 30 minutes, uh, uh, a 30 minute trip it would mean it would have to do like three or four requests if these three or four requests are going faster than what a server would be able to to, to reply under load, I think we did, we've we've done a we've done a good job, right? And um, basically, this kind of web API that's what we've uh, what we've now launched at graph.tyrell.be slash sncb slash connections. So it's a new API that that's uh, that's put that is put next to the api.tyrell.be, but we we uh, we try to get. Uh, uh, more users on that one because it allows a lot or it has uh, way more positive uh, uh, properties um, for instance uh, or you can first maybe test it yourself if, if, if you're interested at linkedconnections.org you will find this demo where you can press two uh, two things on a uh, on a map and then you will see that your browser is calculating the route for you 
So the browser will download the right data just in time. So you will see the minimum spanning tree expanding. So that's the, the, the blue lines that, that you see from the moment that you select two things. It's downloading these pages and it's processing it, selecting the right ones that it could possibly take, and it, and it goes towards this. This demo, it was, um, uh, uh, I wrote two years ago, I think, or a couple of, or three years ago, I'm not sure anymore, but it was coded in, in, in 100 lines of code. So it was very, very basic. It's just, yeah, it's okay. It's not one fetch thing anymore. I need to have more intelligence on the client, but still 100 lines of code is still quite okay compared to, um, compared to, to, to way more difficult things, I guess. Yeah, but still 100, uh, uh, 100 lines of code still, still, still works uh, and is still manageable. This thing, this 100 lines of code was the start of an entire root planning framework that we, uh, that we now put at planner.js.org that we also are soon, uh, in, in, during summer, we will uh, do some tests with students to see whether it's, it's easy enough and then we will uh, launch it. But it's already an alpha version, so you can already start using it to plan your trips from, from A to B across this knowledge graph. So this means if you use this thing, it will start doing multiple requests, follow links, and, uh, uh, and get to, to, to one point uh, uh, or another. So point one that's, that's really important in this kind of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of developments is that now, the, 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 the client has any kind of flexibility. If you want to add wheelchair accessibility in here, you do not need to call the, 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 the SNCB anymore. You can just collect your own data, put it in there, and implement it as a client-side feature. If you want to, to have intermodal trips with space elevators, you don't have to ask the SNCB, you can do it yourself. And that's the, uh, that's the beauty of it. It becomes really extensible. Thanks to JavaScript, of course. I need to say it again. Yes, we can. Um, the, uh, uh, furthermore, for, for, the, for the SNCB, the, the, the thing that they need to put forward, and I don't like to, 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 to give them too much, too much responsibility uh, because they, they tend to, to, to be delayed at, at, at stuff. So what I, what I try to do is to, to, to put forward a really basic API. And, and let's be honest, just providing a long list of all your departures Fragment them, fragmenting them in, in, in pages, that's quite okay as a, as, a, as a responsibility. So our open data API becomes pretty lightweight. It becomes almost like hosting data dumps. Only data dumps of a lot of, uh, uh, of, 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 these, uh, of these pages. Next, we can still have a great user-perceived performance. And this is, this is on purpose that I see, say user-perceived performance. Why? Because, because, okay, the real performance, if you, if you do it once, it will go probably slower than, than, than what you're used to with a, with a, uh, with a service-oriented architecture API, like uh, you ask a question, or an RPC call, uh, you, you, you send a question to the server, the server gives you an answer. Um, but, but the user-perceived performance, from the moment that you do a couple of requests, the caching will chip in, and you will be able to, 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 to see that that Sometimes you will not at all have to have to transfer any data anymore uh, uh, over, uh, over the web. And fourth, last but not least, is that now the entire question does not get transmitted to the, uh, to the server. It's now only I need that window of, uh, of, of, of time schedules. So, so it's privacy by design, if, uh, uh, if you will. So everyone, every open data reuser, every client, can just keep all the user data on the uh, on the client itself and only needs to download uh, a part of the of the time schedules again. So um, that's what 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 I ask the SNCB today. That's what I know finally my answer after some research at at, at Ghent University. That's that's what I what I asked the SNCB. But there's also a reason why I'm really excited about this uh, uh, this this meetup group is because I also want to to make a mark in the, the development uh, community as well because I believe we also need to start. Uh, uh, start developing our apps differently. And I have, uh, um, uh, I have three big uh, uh, takeaways to start, um, uh, to start interacting with low feature, but truly open web APIs. And with truly open, I mean, you don't have to request an API key or anything, no, and just open web APIs. You just do a fetch and you, 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 uh, uh, you retrieve the data. The first uh, takeaway that, that I have is, your web app should recognize features automatically. From the moment that you arrive at a certain web page, you, so you should also scan the, 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 the metadata that's added to it. Maybe somehow you will find, this is the most, uh, most uh, uh, simple example, but uh, maybe you will find an X page in there. 
So how can you find an, uh, well, an, a, a next page? There, there's some RFC for, for the link headers. There's some in the, the open JSON API uh, spec. There's or the open API spec. There's, a, there's also a way to, to, to reference a next page. In Hull, there's a, there's a way to do it. In Hydra, there's, there's a way to do it. Uh, uh, and so on and so forth. So, so what if we could just create one class that from any kind of API can extract an X page. Then we would never have to code for that. For 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 uh, then we would never have to code any uh, anything again. In any future future thing we code, we just use that that class and it will be able to extract an X page. We just need to request to everyone who who built APIs that they use one of the many standards right now that exists to uh, uh, reference an X page. How many of you have already written code to 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 extract an X page from 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 an API? Uh, it's silly that we just didn't reuse each other's code for that because there are standards to uh, uh, to do that. And if we do so, we can immediately we are immediately not we are not coding for one specific data source, but we're immediately coding for many open data uh, uh, many open data apis and that's really what we what we want to head towards is that our api immediately or our app immediately becomes uh, uh, becomes interoperable with all the the open data apis that are that are out there a next page is not the is not the only uh, is not the only thing that that we of course can uh, can think about. What about uh, geospatial tiling? Maybe we can put that in metadata. What about uh, a full text search? What about um, uh, what about uh, uh, logging in uh, f features like this? I think that should become common building blocks that everyone just has uh, lying around and. I think Ruben will, will elaborate, elaborate on, the, on, on the user specific needs and the read write web, but we still have a lot of work getting there. And if we just all keep writing our own, uh, our own code and our own code on top of our own web API, we're not going to uh, uh, progress a lot as uh, humanity working with, uh, with, uh, with, with the open data. Here's an example of the uh, of uh, uh, JSON LD with um, uh, or uh, JSON uh, API with um, uh, uh, with the raw data behind. So so that's something that we that we prototyped, and it's uh, just we we um, we decided that from the moment the page loads, we just uh, uh, coded it with uh, one tile that that was ready, this one, and we said like, look, you can uh, uh, you can yourself uh, recognize the, the 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 links or the the building block that there are other tiles on this server. This JavaScript uh, uh, snippet recognizes that there are other tiles, uh, requests the other tiles, and is also immediately able, because behind this there are not PNG images, but it, uh, there's, uh, there's JSON data, so you can immediately also perform a route planning algorithm across a roads network on top of this. This is also something that, that we believe that that will be the future of, uh, uh, of, of open data APIs, is that the data itself is just presented in, uh, uh, in systems like this, and that we automatically can detect on the basis of one specific response what features a certain server will, will, will offer. And for open data, I believe these features that it offers should be so, uh, a low feature as possible. It should be a kind of fragmentation of your data, whether it's time-based, such as in the public transit uh, uh, use case, or whether it's uh, a geospatial-based, like uh, uh, like over here. The second thing is uh, uh, is um, uh, async iterators. Who knows about async iterators already? Okay, two people. Whoa. Okay, so so uh, async iterators. That's um, uh, that just. To you could see it as syntactic sugar in, uh, in, in, in JavaScript, but it's also quite cool because uh, as, a, uh, as a system, and it, uh, uh, this sums, sums it up quite nicely, is that um, uh, you, can, uh, you can get a value from a, from a certain class, one value from a certain uh, class, uh, class synchronously, just get value and you will get immediately a, a return of a certain thing. You can also get synchronously one uh, value from uh, uh, multiple values uh, from it through an iterator. Yeah, then you can you, you now have the, the syntactic sugar in uh, in, uh, in in ECMAScript 2016. It was introduced, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure with numbers uh, anymore. But uh, but you can yield stuff. 
So uh, from uh, when you're in a class, you can uh, when you're in a, in a method, you just uh, type yield one, yield two, yield three, and so on, and then uh, 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 then you can just iterate over that uh, over the results of that uh, uh, of that method. So you can use it in a for loop and so on. What you also have is asynchronously is uh, 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 is that you get a, a promise and then you have to await it. You know about about promises await. Yes. Okay. Good. But they're not not really uh, 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 not long. It it, uh, it it lasted a while until there was a good solution to have asynchronous multiple values so that you can uh, can can yield or can wait for things that are being downloaded from the web. And this is what that is what I'm uh, uh, heading towards is that that if you're working on on, on these kind of, of web APIs, what you really want is is to show early responses to the uh, early results to the uh, to the uh, client if something works in a streaming fashion if you if you immediately see the first results that will benefit the user perceived uh, performance because the first results are there i don't i don't really need to wait and this is what we for instance implemented in the planner.js.org the first result is loaded really fast but in the back you see the scroll bar going up downloading downloading more uh, downloading more results so um uh, uh so still if you if you want to raise the user perceived performance it's a great way because sometimes in some ways you can even find results faster than a typical api would a traditional api would i give a quick example just like if you would uh, uh, ask um, a root planning api to go from a to b at last 200 milliseconds but if you would ask, uh, uh, if you would ask, ah, give me the timetables, then in each request would, for instance, last 50 milliseconds because it's just off, uh, just offering the uh, the thing. The server doesn't have any any work on that; can just immediately serve it from cache. So if that uh, uh, if, if that happens and the first results already uh, uh, already coming in, that means that I can already give a first result after, for for instance, 100 milliseconds because of the, the, the faster pages that, uh, uh, that get downloaded. The full response, however, will maybe take, uh, uh, take a longer time. The third takeaway that I want to, uh, want to uh, give is that if you're working with, with open web APIs, with open data web APIs, is that you, do not sh that you should not copy the uh, data model from the, uh, from the API that you're working with. Try to work with the, the data model that you, uh, that you want yourself. If you're an app that looks for, for root planning, things you should try to look as as much as possible for things that resemble a departure of a, of a bus or a train but if uh, if some api calls it uh, a connection another one calls it a, a stop time another one calls it uh, uh, an, an arrival at, uh, at at some place that's some stuff that you should just be able to to, to handle as part of your of of, of your uh, of your system again that should be again a new class or a new building block that you that you support uh, with your system and this building block is what we now support with uh, planner.js.org which you can uh, adjust install if you don't want to uh, uh, implement it on your own as a, a, a quick final thing is that if you would want to to now build an app that calculates the the uh, the total delay of a uh, of a train network let's say the sncb at this time how should we, uh, uh, what should we do? Well, step one is just hard code what uh, the, 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 the first uh, spot of uh, where we would start. And that's, I can give it to you, grab.iro.b slash ncb slash connections. That's the entry point of, uh, uh, of our uh, system. The next thing that we, that we do is uh, we look for connection objects. That's, uh, that's the, the uh, each time the blue blocks that, that are in there and we we uh, we accumulate their uh, delay in the metadata of this page we look for the next page links and finally we just follow these next page links i hope just with a class that you or an npm package that, that you installed you just follow these next page links until you think you have enough data and you can do that with uh, the design pattern of the async iterator that just will uh, uh, that just will say ah okay you you are now not anymore requesting the next uh, uh, thing of things, so I will uh, uh, I will stop downloading uh, uh, pages here. I've implemented this for you because it's a, it's a it's a fun project. Um, am I able to review this? Yes, I am. 
and no, apparently, and you see it uh, accumulating thanks to the design pattern. Apparently, at this moment, there are 2,535 minutes delay across the entire uh, uh, train network. How does this work? Well, uh, you can certainly go through the code. I see that I reached my uh, speaking limits, but feel certainly free to, to, to go through the code. You will see that over here, I hard coded also the next page link, the way how to, how to extract the next page link. I just, I've, I've, didn't, I've done some lazy coding. I, I just said, you can, can, you can uh, fetch me 10, uh, uh, 10 of the next pages. Um, and it will, uh, yeah, it will just accumulate the, the, the next delays. Just this as a demo to show that you can really build anything. On the IRL API, if you wanted to, to implement this on the api.irel.be, you would first have to set up a server. You would have to start harvesting the delays. You would then, on top of these delays, have to implement an API yourself that you could uh, talk to in your own, uh, uh, in, in your own uh, system. Now, we're just doing an extra step in the JavaScript code. We've been able to just go serverless. Right now, it's the SNCB has to publish this kind of, 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 uh, of way of publishing. Okay, now we are doing it for them, as just like we've done the, the IRL API on graph.irl.be. But from the browser, you can implement any feature you want. Thank you very much. <laughs>